Hello everyone, I hope everybody is doing well. Tonight we're going to be looking at our severe weather threat across the south central United States. And mainly we'll be talking about tonight's severe weather threat as well as tomorrow's severe weather threat. We'll also quickly look at Saturday's and Sunday's severe weather threat as well. So to start off, we are looking at tonight's Storm Prediction Center's outlook. This is the 01Z update so this is the latest update and this update will uh the new update will come out in about three hours from when i'm recording this so looking right here we do have an enhanced risk in west texas around that as a slight risk uh from south to eastern Colorado, and then to the south into parts of southwestern kansas and far western oklahoma including the panhandle then heading east into central and eastern texas and then in, uh, into parts of western louisiana there around that is a marginal risk that surrounds that slight and then we have that enhanced risk right there and then looking north we do have a small um, spot of a marginal risk here and that is from far southwestern minnesota and that goes southwest in two parts of nebraska and eastern south dakota looking at our tornado risk we do have a two percent here and this is from south eastern colorado down south and then we do have a five percent tornado risk here in western texas and then into parts of the panhandle of texas there and then that goes east into parts of western louisiana there looking at our wind risk we do have a 30 percent wind risk here with a hatched and just about most of that if not all of that 30 percent risk there and the hatched is a 10 percent or greater probability of wind gusts 65 knots or greater within 25 miles of a point in this area there where those dash lines are around that is a 15 percent risk from southeastern colorado and then to the southeast into parts of western oklahoma and the panhandle and into parts of southwestern kansas there then east into parts of western louisiana same deal with our five percent risk just a little bit wider in those states looking north we do have a five percent wind risk here and that is from far southwestern um southwestern minnesota and then down southwest into parts of eastern south dakota and into parts of nebraska there then looking at our hail risk it's pretty similar that is a 30 percent risk right here and then we have a hatch risk around that 30 percent risk in western texas and that shows uh, that goes around the entire 30 percent risk and then it goes down a little bit towards the 15 percent risk to that hatch risk does and the hatched area means 10 percent or greater probability of two inch diameter hell or larger within 25 miles of a point in this area right here and then around that we do have our 15 percent risk from southeastern colorado and southwestern kansas there that goes south into the panhandle of texas and oklahoma and then into eastern new mexico there then looking at our uh, risk up north, we do have a 5% there from southwestern Minnesota down to the southwest into eastern South Dakota and in two parts of central and northeastern Nebraska there. First looking towards the south central United States and then we're going to move up north towards more of the northern high plains. But right now we do have on the 02Z HRRR does show quite a few storms and clusters into louisiana there and eastern texas and we also have some storms over the next couple of hours that move into the panhandle of oklahoma or that are in the panhandle of oklahoma and texas at them uh right now and are going to move through there soon and then going for the uh, next couple of hours here does show a couple of some discrete storms there into parts of central texas and eastern texas and then again, as we get late tonight into early tomorrow, we do have more clusters form and probably supercells going there. And then we have this slight little line here and showing up on the 02Z HRRR. And this will be into central, uh, north central, and then kind of eastern Texas there. And then we have this um, kind of an MCS, you could probably call it, trying to move through 
into central and eastern Texas there. This will be very, uh, very early tomorrow. And then that'll move through and then into eastern Texas there. And then we'll have re-intensification of storms in the morning. And then we could see a, another MCS tomorrow, but we'll talk about that threat in just a little bit. We're just going to talk about tonight's threat for right now. And then I uh, will talk about tomorrow's more in depth. Looking at the 0Z 3 kilometer NAM here, same thing with those storms moving through the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma. Does show them quite a bit stronger over the next hour or two. There, we'll have to watch that. And it kind of forms into more of an MCS uh, looking on the three kilometer NAM. We'll have to watch that as you get into the next several hours and early tomorrow. So definitely something to watch two different models showing pretty much two different things. Cause then the uh, HRRR does not have much of a uh, defined line into Texas, but it does show quite a few strong storms. This forms into a pretty, pretty intense MCS here as you go into northern texas and then farther south into central texas and this would be very early tomorrow and then really the nam shows a completely different thing than what the hrrr does but it picks up on that uh, mcs though for sure and then it also picks on uh picks up on a kind of another little system here um moving in through the Texas Panhandle into northern Texas there. But we'll have to see which of these models will maintain what they show. We'll see if the HRRR changes and we'll see if the NAM changes, but definitely something to monitor as you get late into tonight and then into early tomorrow because two of the different uh, two different models show two different things here. So definitely something to monitor. Now we're going to look at the 0z actually we'll go to the 02z wrap model here for our mix our cape values so there isn't a lot of instability as you get to northeast texas right now and the um northeast texas right now and then into the texas panhandle but looking south where some more storms could form um in the next couple of hours you do have quite a bit of instability here um values well over 23 2,500 joules per kilogram, maybe reaching, maybe reaching 3,000 joules per kilogram there. Then even into West Texas, values over 3,500 joules per kilogram showing up on the 02Z wrap. So as you get in the next several hours, that instability kind of pushes north and you'll have some more of that instability. And then this would probably favor more of the HRRR model showing that MCS moving through tomorrow morning instead of the NAMS showing of it moving through uh, late tonight into early tomorrow. So definitely something to watch still. And then we'll have to keep watching that, but we'll move on to Friday's threat in just a couple minutes. So now looking at our low level jet on the 02Z rep, we don't have much of a low level jet, uh, a strong low level jet right now, but throughout the next several hours, that low level jet will get going into parts of central and western Texas there. Uh, 30, lower 30 knot low level jet there. Definitely enough for those storms will take a sounding right there just to see if we can find anything. It does have a marginal tornado sounding here. You do have kind of a hurt, uh, curved hodograph there and you do have plenty of instability um, there showing up a little bit kind of a little bit of a cap though showing up so definitely won't have a widespread coverage of those uh, storms but any of those storms can get going kind of with that little bit of a cap there in the atmosphere we'll definitely be able to have the potential to produce maybe a tornado but going farther into very late uh very early tomorrow excuse me into early tomorrow morning the low level jet uh decreases intensity as you get into earlier tomorrow and then we'll just have to watch that period where you do have that low level jet pretty strong over central and western texas parts of central and western texas there uh, late tonight into early tomorrow 
now looking towards more of the north central United States we do have this kind of a long line of just jumbled up storms and clusters showing up on the 0 to ZH triple R and this will be about right now then throughout the next hour or two we could see those storms maintaining most of their strength maybe a couple more forming into parts of South Dakota into maybe Minnesota there and even Nebraska right here just that little bit of a hell and wind risk with these storms so nothing major but definitely something to watch as you get into uh, very late tonight into early tomorrow but I would say by after maybe sometime uh, midnight they will try to start to weaken into Minnesota and South Dakota as well as Nebraska but looking west you could see tomorrow's uh, storms getting going there we'll, we'll talk about that in just a little bit as well just very quickly looking at our instability for these areas not a lot but as you get in the next hour or two uh, maybe into southeastern South Dakota and parts of Nebraska values of uh, mixed layer cape around and over 1000 joules per kilogram there there's 1500 showing up on the HRRR and then looking to the southwest um, well over a thousand there so a decent amount of instability for these storms so just something to watch over the next several hours now looking at tomorrow's severe weather threat on friday may the 31st we do have two slight risk first we'll start off with this other one in the central u.s and we'll talk about the other one in the southern u.s there but looking at this one we do have a slight risk just a little spot of nebraska there going south in two parts of Colorado and northeast New Mexico in the panhandle uh, northwest panhandle of Texas and the far western panhandle of Oklahoma there and then into western Kansas there into another area of far southwestern Nebraska there then we have a marginal, marginal risk around that and then we also have a slight risk here into Texas then goes uh, east into central and northern Louisiana then into quite a big portion of uh, south eastern and central arkansas and then into northwestern mississippi there as well as that marginal risk around that as well looking at our tornado risk we do have a five percent uh, risk here and that includes arkansas and northern louisiana into western mississippi there and then we have a two percent tornado risk around that and that goes all the way into southwestern Tennessee as well and then into parts of central and then western Mississippi there then into Louisiana far northeastern um, Texas there and then into Arkansas there then looking to our southwest in Texas here we do have a 2% tornado risk with this too and that is into parts of central and then into parts of southern Texas there looking at our wind risk here we do have two 15 percent areas other one is where our other slight risk is and that is into western Kansas there into parts of southwestern Nebraska into eastern Colorado then into the panhandle of western panhandle of Oklahoma northwest panhandle of Texas northeast New Mexico and then looking down to our southeast we have that 15% risk there that is into parts of central and eastern Texas then to our east into northern Louisiana and southern Arkansas and then a small spot into western Mississippi there then around that is a large 5% risk that it surrounds all of these areas here then looking at our hell risk we do have two 15% risk with those as well one is in parts of northwestern the northwestern panhandle of Texas and then into western Oklahoma the panhandle of Oklahoma there and then into northeastern New Mexico and then into parts of eastern Colorado there and a small tiny spot there into parts of Nebraska and then that surrounds around that is a large 5% risk in these states here so first we're going to start in the central u.s then we'll go down south into texas and then into arkansas and louisiana and mississippi there but now looking at the zero z h triple r this is our long range uh, run here and then 
so looking tomorrow and then as you get to early tomorrow morning you do have those storms um quite a few looking like they'll be forming very late tonight into early tomorrow and this will be responsible for that um risk into parts of colorado as well as kansas and parts of nebraska there these storms will be very late tonight into early tomorrow but probably likely into very early tomorrow well before the sun comes up so you'll have these storms here and they'll be strong and that'll be with your hell and wind risk here and then that'll pretty much be the main threat in these areas right here tomorrow with any of those storms then looking later into the day you could have a couple more uh, storms here into nebraska and kansas and then probably will be um re-intensifying later into the day as you get more of that daylight heating same thing again across parts maybe of kansas central kansas mainly nebraska with those storms and then probably you'll have your other storms that will be in that risk area we were just talking about earlier that'll start forming into parts of colorado and new mexico here and that'll be in the early to mid evening hours tomorrow on friday and you'll have those storms get going and then they'll kind of uh take a little bit of time to intensify there looking like on the zero z h triple r but then these storms will pretty much move into the panhandle of texas and oklahoma there as well as kansas and maybe even nebraska but mainly into parts of eastern colorado and eastern new mexico there and those storms will pretty much be gone and will turn into probably some showers by very late tomorrow night into early on saturday so now looking at our mixed layer cape so looking at some of those storms that will probably be ongoing um, very late tonight to early tomorrow for our risk areas we do have uh, quite a bit of uh, decent area of instability into parts of northern kansas and southern nebraska here this will be very early tomorrow well before the sun comes up uh, 2,000 joules per kilogram showing up there around that as an area of well every 1,000 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape that is our instability and then that instability there will pretty much go away that area and then we'll have a new area that forms tomorrow with that sun that sun coming out and you'll have that uh, you'll have that heating in the day and that'll give you some unstable air into parts of kansas as well as nebraska tomorrow and then even into maybe iowa as well and then even south dakota but then as you get later into the day you'll have those other storms that will get going into parts of new mexico and as well as colorado there and into kansas and you'll pretty much have um probably low low end to maybe moderate instability throughout most of the day and then those storms that we were talking about earlier will head east and that will eat in and um, pretty much take up all that instability and the air behind it will be pretty stable for the most part as those storms try to move east also just real quick i wanted to mention southwestern tennessee for tomorrow's threat that is in a marginal risk i forgot to mention that earlier and that's my fault so for right now, we're going to be looking at these zero Z H triple R, and we're mainly going to be talking about Oklahoma and Texas for right just for right now, and then we're going to compare models in a second. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at tomorrow's MCS uh, that could happen tomorrow, uh, showing up on the zero Z H triple R, and then we'll head east, and then we'll look at arkansas and louisiana as well as mississippi and tennessee but mainly we'll be talking about texas and oklahoma for just right now so looking early to uh, late tonight excuse me into early tomorrow on friday you're going to have storms that beginning that begin to form into parts of northern texas and into the panhandle of texas and then as you get into early very early tomorrow morning as the sun comes up you will have that MCS 
that tries to form up into the panhandle of Texas and then into northern Texas and central Texas there. And then this will be responsible for our hell threats and as well as our probably our tornado risk too down here and our wind risk too. That'll be the main factor with this MCS here. And looking as it goes south, this will maintain quite a bit, maintain its strength quite a bit as it moves through central Texas here. And you'll really have to watch this tomorrow for all those storms and that just long line of storms as they move to the south. And this will be late, mid to late morning tomorrow. And then as that goes south, it still maintains most of its strength there. And it'll continue to move south and kind of to the southeast. And we'll have to watch that definitely. And it pretty much maintains most of its strength. And really, it pretty much maintains most of its strength throughout the entire state of Texas. And then even as it uh, reaches Louisiana there, um, definitely watch out if you're in southwestern Louisiana tomorrow. That'll be very late tomorrow evening into tomorrow night. You'll have to watch that, see if that um, heads to the southeast and into Louisiana for sure tomorrow. And then we'll, um, we'll talk about Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi and Tennessee in just a second. But now we're going to compare our models and we're going to look at the three kilometer NAM. So as we were talking about earlier with that, uh, that uh, MCS showing up on the three kilometer NAM late tonight into early tomorrow, looking on the three kilometer NAM, it looks like it'll move through kind of the same areas showing up on the HRRR, but quite a bit earlier. This would be um, before the sun comes up, it'll still be dark and this will be very early tomorrow. So you'll have to watch this as it gets into parts of central and northern texas here tomorrow so it looks like it weakens quite a bit as you get into tomorrow morning and then into the mid morning hours and late morning hours that kind of moves east and you have this long line probably pretty strong storms maybe severe tomorrow that moves kind of into uh, oklahoma arkansas louisiana there and then it has this other little spot of uh, storms and clusters moving through central Texas. This may re-intensify, but we'll have to watch this. This is pretty much what the HRRR was picking up on. And it shows it on the three kilometer NAM, kind of the same. I mean, you still have clusters here, but the MCS that it shows, the three kilometer NAM shows is a lot earlier and, um, kind of moves through a lot earlier and does not maintain its strength throughout Texas and then into Oklahoma and Arkansas but we'll have to watch this and monitor both models for sure and definitely keep a keep a lookout for the uh, storm prediction centers outlooks as you get into tomorrow because this could change definitely depending on what the short range models do so still looking at Texas and Oklahoma specifically and even into parts of Louisiana and Arkansas, then we'll move east in just a little bit, talking about that other threat. But for right now, we're gonna be looking at the 0ZH triple R and looking at Mixler Cape. I will look at the um, 03Z wrap model, but it is still loading and it's barely showing. Uh, it barely goes out just a couple of hours in the other run long range model, the, uh, or excuse me, not the long range model, but the long range run from the wrap is um at 21z and that was uh several hours ago so it probably wouldn't be as accurate and up to date as the 0 zh triple r would be so we're gonna look at it for right now and looking here uh definitely quite a bit of mixed layer cape and then this would show that uh, mcs moving south and southeast through central texas with that cape and that stable air behind those storms and this would be definitely a different setup if you looked on the three kilometer nam with the mixed layer cape uh, i definitely wouldn't show this uh, fine line between the stable air and unstable air but still as you have um as an mcs moves east 
from the 0ZHRRR. You have values in front of it, well over 3,000 joules per kilogram in some, uh, some spots. And then values, yeah, well over 3,000 joules per kilogram and values well over 2,000 joules per kilogram in parts of Texas. And just mainly throughout the entire line, values well over 2,500 joules per kilogram, but over 3,000 in some spots. And then into even Louisiana there um, tomorrow morning, showing up on the 08 ship bar, values well over 2,500 joules per kilogram in southwestern Louisiana, maybe even 3,000 in some spots. So definitely something to watch tomorrow and then we'll look at um we'll look at our other storms in just a moment again keeping a look at these zero z h triple r and we're going to now look more towards arkansas and louisiana as well as mississippi and tennessee for right now and then we'll look at um saturday and sunday's threat really quickly after this but Looking at this, this would be very early tomorrow before the sun comes up um, into late tonight. You have the storms forming into parts of central Arkansas there. And then quite a few storms kind of lingering around, not really moving into parts of uh, Arkansas there. And that'll be very early tomorrow morning then. And then you will have those storms beginning to form into the mid and late morning hours, uh, early and mid morning hours tomorrow into Arkansas there. This is on the 0 z R. Then it shows more uh, kind of discrete and isolated storms trying to form into parts of Louisiana and Arkansas tomorrow. Then throughout the uh, early afternoon hours, you do have quite a few storms into Louisiana and Arkansas. Definitely some strong storms down there. And these will all be capable of some hell and definitely a wind threat for sure. And we'll also have that tornado threat here as well in two parts of Arkansas and Louisiana. And um, then by tomorrow evening on the 0ZH triple R, it does show <coughs> it does show quite a few storms here. And you'll have to we'll have to watch those tomorrow and then as they get uh as you get later into the evening into tomorrow night widespread coverage of storms especially into northern louisiana and then with that with those storms into possibly eastern oklahoma showing up there and into northern and central arkansas into parts of uh tennessee even too and then tomorrow late tomorrow evening into tomorrow night quite a few storms moved into uh mississippi here and then into parts of tennessee and tennessee probably won't be in too much uh great as a threat but still a little bit of a severe weather threat there tomorrow but looks like most of these will continue to weaken begin to continue to weaken as you get late tomorrow night into early on saturday now looking back on the uh, Mixler Cape. So now still we're focusing on Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, uh, Mississippi and Tennessee there. Looking as you get into the early afternoon hours, you're going to have uh, Mixler Cape values well over 2,000 joules per kilogram as I was showing earlier. And those will be probably some stronger storms uh, down into Louisiana. Then going into Arkansas here, by, uh, Cape values um well over 1000 joules per kilogram probably maybe in the 1500 joules per kilogram range and then as you get later into the day you'll have you'll still have some instability into arkansas but it'll begin to uh, kind of wane down and still values well over 1500 joules per kilogram in some spots in central arkansas and into southern arkansas Values well over 1500 joules per kilogram for sure. But then going later into the day, into late, into the uh, night, that instability will pretty much wane off as you get those storms that'll begin to form and you'll lose your daytime heating with those storms. Now, looking at our low level jet for um, tomorrow. So I am going to go ahead and look at that low level jet into texas and then 
uh, mainly into Texas, and then we'll look at Louisiana and Arkansas just in a second where you have that other tornado threat. But we do have a 2% uh, tornado risk down here, so that'll be with that, probably with that MCS, I would say. And I mean, really looking here, this will be probably behind the MCS. Looking here, if we take a sounding here, that'll be uh, more behind it. But as this moves to the south and you have that that uh that little level jet here this will be with the mcs but the mcs will probably be uh the strongest of it will be probably over here and so going out ahead of this a little bit um you can probably see maybe uh i mean there's a severe sound in there but you'll have to watch tomorrow just with any um lines with that mcs if it does get going later in the day you'll have that instability there and then you'll have that low level jet in um some spots so i'm trying to find a good sounding but probably looking right here maybe you might could find a better sounding uh not really good sounding but so with that mcs as it moves to the south and southeast on the zero z h triple r you'll have to watch for just some maybe brief tornadoes but maybe a tornado or two with that line then looking into arkansas and louisiana this will be uh in the late e uh excuse me late morning hours and then into the early afternoon hours you do have a 25 knot low level jet into arkansas there looking there um nothing really crazy on the sounding there but you'll have to watch that just a little bit for any of those storms where you have uh, some instability and that overlap of that low level jet and that'll be tomorrow and then as you get even into tomorrow night you have to watch it again and this will be the um the better time to look at these storms for sure because you'll have a little bit more instability and you'll have that low level jet trying to increase over arkansas and louisiana there but I can't really, really find a good sounding here, but still, you do have a little bit of a curved photograph there. Not a lot of uh, low-level winds there, but still not a lot of instability in the sounding either. So definitely something to watch though tomorrow for Arkansas, Louisiana, where you can get that that tornado threat tomorrow. So now, very quickly, we're going to take a look at Saturday's severe weather threat. So we do have a slight risk here. Or day three on Saturday and this is the 0730Z outlook and this will be updated um, just in a couple hours from now so looking here we do have our slight risk here into western Nebraska and into northwest Kansas and eastern Colorado there around that is a large marginal risk in the central Great Plains down to the south central US, then headed east into parts of the mid south there. And looking at our probabilistic, same thing 15% uh, is automatically a sight risk, and 5% is automatically a marginal risk around that. Then looking at our day four severe weather risk, we do have a 15% risk, and that is from. Um, pretty much central and eastern South Dakota, then headed east into parts of southeastern North Dakota, then a part of northwestern Iowa, and then into a large part of central Minnesota there, into northwestern Wisconsin there. And we'll look at what's behind these two severe weather threats in just a second, and we'll look at Saturday's severe weather threat real quick, and Sunday's just briefly. So now looking at our 500 millibar winds on the 0Z GFS. So looking at, quickly looking at um, what's behind Saturday's severe weather threat as well as uh, Sunday's. So looking here into parts of Nebraska as well as Wyoming and then Montana and Idaho, you can see a little bit, it's kind of hard to see, but you do have a little bit of a short wave trough here and that'll be behind the severe weather threat in parts of the central U.S. And then looking to the south, you do have that other little trough there, and that'll be responsible for 
Um, Saturday, severe weather threat still over the southern U.S. and parts of the Mid-South. Then look into Sunday's severe weather threat. And then as we go into the late morning hours, you do have your main kind of main uh, trough way up here into Canada. And then looking down here, you have a definitely a more defined shortwave trough here. And that'll be guiding that and helping that severe weather threat into parts of Minnesota there in Iowa, as well as South Dakota and Nebraska there on Sunday. Now looking at our dew points, so uh, we're gonna go speed this up to Saturday, uh, probably about midday. So as you can see, you do have quite a bit of moisture, especially with that uh, shortwave trough to the south. Dew points well into the mid 70s in Mississippi, Louisiana, and eastern Texas there. Then looking north into parts of Can uh, Nebraska and Kansas here dew points into the lower 60s and then mainly upper 50s around that and that'll be with uh with a saturday severe weather threat and then on sunday you have that moisture get pushed quite a bit farther north and you'll have probably a little bit of a severe weather threat down to the south but mainly up here in parts of minnesota and south dakota as well as parts of iowa and nebraska but you have dew points into the mid and upper 60s there showing up on the zero z gfs so you'll definitely have um, plenty of moisture up to the north and you'll have to watch out for the severe weather threat on sunday then looking at our low level jet real quick here we'll go to sunday and then you do have quite a bit uh quite a bit of an uh, amplification in that low level jet there your low level jet i mean into parts of minnesota as well as iowa you have a lower 30 knot low level jet and a mid 30 knot low level jet into minnesota we'll take a sound in there real quick just to look at this it does show a tornado sounding here do have that little bit of a curved photograph a uh, decent amount of instability there mixler k 1400 joules per kilogram uh, there you do have a decent amount of low level shear as we were just talking about and you do have a uh, moderate amount of your upper level uh, winds there your strength of your upper level winds so have to watch sunday's threat too will probably be the um the greatest threat we've seen throughout the past couple of days so we'll have to watch it for sure so that is going to be it for tonight's update i know that was a very long update and um i appreciate i really do appreciate all of y'all watching and i do appreciate um the uh the, sh the amount of people who watched my other forecast video the other night um i really do appreciate all of y'all but i'm gonna i'm gonna end it here because i'm i'm starting to lose my voice a little bit because uh, i've been recording for over 40 minutes but it probably won't be quite 40 minutes long after i do some editing to it but I appreciate all of y'all, and I hope everybody has a great Thursday night or a great Friday morning whenever y'all are watching this.